Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode 129. I'm Anton and I will be ho hosting the show this week with my special guest, Hayden. <laughs> welcome back, Hayden. <laughs> uh, great to be here, Anton. I, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, I did. Uh, well, it was it was good. I was uh, isolating because I had COVID, but oh. um, uh, but I did get you know a turkey dinner and and all the rest. And you, uh, also great. Yeah, um, I love this time of year. Oh yes, I know. I know. I see you've got your sweater on. It's definitely um, a good season for that. Uh, well, um, today's episode, as people know, is going to take just five minutes, but it's one of these episodes that really took me a lot longer than that to give some thought to and to really fully understand. And I think that that's the kind of thing that um, that we try to bring to the show is, you know, we, we could do 90 minutes on the topic, but just in just five, we're going to try and condense it down. Um, but we did cover some of these topics previously. And it, um, yes, so we're building on a, a, a previous episode that um, we had with Vincent Morneau, episode 25, in which he laid out um, the importance of apex CSS variables. And so we're revisiting that with a special focus. Yeah, and, and I will say that you know, this, this whole, the, the whole world of CSS and the world of theme roller is something that I don't, I don't always dig into. Um, but, uh, but I think in just a few minutes, we can perhaps make it a little bit easier for, for folks like me that, that aren't in the theme roller uh, day in and day out. Um, and it's also about doing things. What I'm going to say is the right way, not just going in and, and hacking something, but we'll, we'll go through, um, we'll go through what took me quite a bit longer, really, really quickly and, and kind of hit those steps, uh, along the way. Look forward to it. So let me share my screen and tell you what the what was going on. So essentially, um, and this is last week's or a few weeks ago um, uh, screen, but I, I had a customer that um, they they feel that this is a little bit washed out. Um, what they all they they like everything about it except that this modal screen doesn't show. I think you're you're heating a little bit, Anton. You um... yeah. let me click off the timer. Okay. So essentially, they want the 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 dialog title bar. Let's call it. Um, to to stand out, they want it to stand out so they can see that this is the primary focus at this moment. Well, that sounds simple enough. Uh, I imagine if you were to open up Theme Roller, you could find the uh, the uh, the thing that designates the uh, title bar of the modal dialog and just change it there. So I went through looking. I, I mean, I tried to change things like this. Uh, nope, that didn't do it. No. I I, try, I could not find the title bar. I mean, if I changed the background of everything. You know, sure, I oh, even that didn't do it. Uh, but you know, I am able to get it to change under some circumstances. But when I do that, it changes a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. I couldn't target that directly. Um, so uh, this is um, something that we have uh, tackled in previous episodes, also related to the modal dialog. We can hook into uh, a class that uniquely designates the uh, modal dialog title. Yeah, so it's right there. It's the, the, the title bar. So let's go ahead and do this. And I want to do this throughout my entire application. So I can just come into Theme Roller and I can do a little bit of uh, custom CSS here. I'm going to hook into that title bar and I'm going to go ahead and make it blue. So I'm going to pop that in here right now. It's a tiny little bit of CSS. I'm, it's that class, so the dot UI dialog title, background color blue. So I do that and I am done. What do you think? Well, a couple of thoughts here. One, it, it's not the same blue as the other blues I see on the page. And two, it doesn't seem to gel well with the other colors on the page. I, I, I'm no designer, but it, it seems discordant to me. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think what we probably want is probably to go with just this primary accent color, right? And there's a few ways to dig into finding this, but I, I really think the way to do it is if you go to apex.oracle.com slash UT, you get to the universal theme um, application. And within here, there's this reference area. Now, we've talked before about these lists don't always correspond to these. The ones on the right here don't have CSS variables. You have to okay. open this up to get to see it. So we're going to come into CSS variables. Right there, yeah. right? um, we're going to come into CSS variables. And what we're going to do is we're just going to look for primary because that's what that was listed as. Uh, primary. So we've got this variable var ut primary. So instead of blue, I'm going to come right over here 
and I'm going to go and change it from blue to that variable. By doing that, now it automatically does this. If I change the theme to a different theme and I, I apply the same styling, it's going to take care of everything. Everything will look good. Nice. And, and uh, yeah, to state the obvious, if you were to change the primary color above, it, it would change it here as well. Exactly. Uh, so still a small issue. Um, the edit workout on the modal uh, title seems to have the wrong contrast. Ah, yes. Every one it's of these high. variables that we talk about for colors, not only do they have the original, the, the actual color, they have a contrasting color. So what we want to do is we want to put that contrasting color in as well. And that's something I think you should consider every time you do any kind of this thing, you want to take the, you want to take both. So if the background is one thing, you want the foreground to be the, the, the contrast. Um, if the, the, um, and vice versa. So, uh, fix that. There we go. So now we, we've taken care of it. Um, and, and we um, uh, we sort of overlooked the other colors that, that seem to be available in the uh, theme roller. Um, uh, there, there are a bunch of curated colors here for review. Um, right. Maybe you'd want to make the modal dialog pop a little bit more. So let's say we want to get color 12. Well, we could go back to the same screen here. We could look up what the, the class is, but I'll just use, it's going to be the, the, the variable is uh, you color 12. And then along with the contrast as well, we get that right there. Brilliant. Th this, um, it, it occurs to me that this might explain something that has mystified me for some time here. Um, in the uh, standard region, uh, you yeah. can pick an accent color, and it has always been a source of frustration to me that the accents are numerically designated rather than descriptively so. Right. So if we wanted to change this workout to, to a particular color, we go quickly edit that region. We pick up the, the template, and we've got, just like you said, all these accents, right? But we don't know which one. What is it? Well, if you go into theme roller, just like we did, and we pick 12, which is the one we picked before, we're going to get that color, 12, right? And so you can simply come to here, theme roller, take a look at your color palette, and you'll get a pretty good understanding of what your colors are. And I notice it automatically also applies the contrast, uh, the appropriate contrast color to the text. Yes, that's right. So you get to see both right there. So I think that uh, that's our five minutes. Um, that's really all we were looking to, uh, um, so, <clears throat> So Plumman says maybe not all the variables are available within in the UT reference app. Um, you know, I I found them to be uh, it to be a pretty good uh, pretty good representation. I think Plumman might be right, but my hope is that that uh, everything here uh, matches over. Um, uh, if you there, there are there are colors advertised in the reference app that are not in theme roller. There are, in fact, if you go to the reference, app, you get a whole bunch more. You get thirty. You get 45 here. And theme roller has what, 15? And theme roller has 15. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I don't know who needs more than 15 colors, right? But uh and, and my 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 real feeling, I'm gonna add two more things just while we're here because Plumman gave me the opening. Huh. Uh, for, first is you know, if you're gonna curate the colors, curate them here, right? Curate them in your variables and then reference them that way. Don't just make up some new one, right? Do it here and, and do what you're going to do. But the other thing that this gives you, which I think is really, really important, is it gives you an idea of what your accessibility is. You can see these mm -hmm. first few are not accessible. This one is the one with the um, this. It tells you, you know, sometimes it's accessible, sometimes it's not, depending on what um, what font sizes you use. So um, these are really great for um, for understanding the accessibility of of your application. So. And uh, when you chose uh, 12, you, you chose one that has a check mark for, um, for it. Right. So uh, um, let's see. Rich says, in the theme roller, it has the colors. The drop down should be changed. You see, I, yeah. I, agree. Oh, I agree. It would be great if the drop down actually showed the colors. You shouldn't have to come back here and back there. Yeah. And back here and there. But, um, but at least there is a place to find them. Um, yeah, I'm embarrassed to admit that, that I would just like, uh, change the accent color and find out what color it was. <laughs> right, you, I, you, I did the same thing. I would run the page and then run the page and then run the page. I mean, when it's cer it's certainly faster to come here and look first, right? Oh, okay, I'm going to pick uh, 14 explicitly as opposed to- 
to state yeah. the obvious, you, you can pick honestly any color and then just change it here and then get the color you want. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So that is our five minutes plus a little bit. I, I happen to have a wisdom of the week. Um, so, uh, uh, oh, um, I'll, before we do it, Angel points out, just to note, the accent colors will also change if you change the theme. Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. The accent colors change if you change the theme, and but that's the reason to use them, and that's the reason to use the variables, in my mind, is by using these variables, you you stay coordinated with whatever theme you change, you choose. Um, and so... Um, that that's that's an important point and and one that that i think just really uh drives home another reason to do it this way um, yeah and, and if you do change your theme you will have to reapply your custom css yes yes if you do it this way if you do it through through theme roller but you can just copy and paste that that same thing yeah. you you could you could store all of these elements in your own css file and then you wouldn't have to do that across so there are some pluses and minuses to how you do this um, if you want to have a little bit more granularity, um, depending on a theme, you want to do certain different things, you might do it in theme roller. If you want to have everything apply the same kind of thing, you might do it in your own CSS file. Um, nice. uh, so uh, returning to my wisdom of the week. Um, so this week's wisdom of the week is um, brought to us by the author of The Little Prince. Hayden, I'm going to let you say the name. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Yes, very good. Um, it, the, the wisdom is per perfection is achieved not when there's nothing more to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. Mm. Um, and I, I think this is a really, a really powerful principle to apply. Rules are meant to be broken, but um, there are all kinds of things you see on a website that, that distract you from what you're trying to get done. Um, and this is true, I mean, actually this is true in not just the web, I mean, this is true for a whole bunch of areas where you might consider, in my own life, I've tried to remove the, remove some distractions lately. Um, I've tried to clean up my wardrobe and not have so many things in it. I've tried to um, just just pare down across across my life entirely, but, but certainly when it comes to a website. Um, and I'll say, I, I saw this and I immediately thought, I really like Gmail. And I really don't like Microsoft Outlook. And when I went and I looked at this and I compared like the Gmail interface with the Microsoft Outlook interface, I thought, wow, I think this apply this really applies there. Um, and it's little things. I'll just say one little example. Gmail, consistently the icons, they're just the icon. They don't have the label. Hmm. But if you want the label, you can simply hover over it and it'll bring it up. So they haven't removed it to the point where, where, where it should be there, but it's gone, but they've removed it to the point where there's nothing left to take away. It's still there, but you don't need to see it all the time. Whereas in Microsoft Outlook, it's this hodgepodge. Sometimes it's got a label and an icon. Sometimes it's just got an icon. When it's got an icon, it doesn't always have a good hover. It's just this, it's so clean in Gmail and so distracting to me in Outlook. It, my own personal, uh, uh, Totally. Um, I, I think Google um, sets a pretty high standard for, I want to call it design minimalism. Um, like the, the, the early Google search page was revolutionary for how minimalist it was. And it continues to be quite minimal. I mean, there's, they've added some things to it, but the, the Google search page continues to be that way. Uh, despite being thousands of lines of JavaScript or something like that, that the visual of it is really clean. Um, so, uh, so this is this week's uh, wisdom of the week, uh, and and very apropos um, given that we're discussing design. Yeah, and, and I'll say I think it also applies to this show. Um, to to pare down a tip to just five minutes, um, you know, it means only <laughs> getting get rid of everything everything you can. Um, so sometimes folks uh, have comments that I think are really um, enlightening and appropriate, uh, and. But, but we jettisoned, jettisoned the topic a little bit to, to fit within five minutes. Well, we will have achieved uh, perfection once we have changed this show into a 10 second TikTok format. Ah, wow. Okay, TikTok, here we come. All right. Well, 
people have wasted a perfectly good 15 minutes today on a five minute show. Um, so do all the things like subscribe, send a letter to your mom, tell her about the show. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye everyone.